Gauteng province accounts for uh, just over a third of South Africa's economic output. It is the uh, key economic hub here. And like the rest of the country, it has been quite hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Premier David Makura is our uh, special guest today. And my colleague Godfrey Mutizwa took him through, uh, spoke with him about a number of factors uh, from the coronavirus recovery effort to building coalitions for Gauteng's hung metros after last week's local government elections. We are le leaving you with this special interview with the Gauteng Premier, David Makura. COVID-19 had a huge impact uh, in the way we do things. Uh, so so get containing the pandemic uh, is uh, the world's priority, is every leader's priority. Mm. Uh, so we, and at the moment, I think the very best thing we can all do is to, uh, to use the vaccines, to use modern science, uh, to uh, ensure that we, uh, we get uh, some sense of normality it can never be the same mm -hmm. uh, so vaccinating is the is, is the most important thing so uh, we started yes south africa started a bit late uh, but we are going in the first safe festive season mm -hmm. if you compare last december november december and this year the big difference is that uh, we are going into a much safer festive season yeah. we are reopening our economy precisely because we have vaccinated more people. So, and vaccinating people yeah. uh, doesn't mean we are satisfied with the numbers. Uh, if just to give you an indication, just in Gauteng alone, yes. we have administered uh, 6.2 6 million uh, vac uh, vaccines do vaccine doses, uh, covering just over 4 million individuals with uh, single doses, right. and 3.2 million people who are now fully vaccinated. So Obviously, we still have a long way to go, a long way to go because we are a province with a huge population. Uh, we still have to cover just around 11 million people. But it's a big, it's a, what, what we have done makes a big difference uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the sense of safety. I mean, when you have a whole family, yeah. now that we are vaccinating even those between 12 and uh, 18 year olds. When you have a whole family vaccinated uh, this December, it's a big difference compared to last December yeah. when we had no one vaccinated. That's last true. December we had no one yeah. vaccinated. Yeah. For the record, Premier, I'm vaccinated. My family is vaccinated. Fantastic. And I push the vaccination message every single Fantastic. day we are on air. Fantastic. Are you on target though to reach the 70% that you have said is important for us to avoid restrictions? Well, uh, look, we, we uh, let, just talking about Gauteng province, I think we really ramped up the vaccination drive. Uh, we are not uh, uh, where we wanted to be uh, by, by November, and I certainly know that we will not uh, by December 16 or even December 25, yeah. uh, by Christmas, we will not be at 70% uh, uh, of the province population. I don't think any part of the country would be there at that level. Yeah. Uh, at that level. But uh, we, are, we, have, we, we, we are still doing everything we can. We, are, we have uh, pop-up sites, we have mobile vaccination sites, we have uh, vaccination sites across uh, the province, both private and public <coughs> uh, sector vaccination sites. <coughs> uh, I must say there's been a a great enthusiasm yeah. uh, at a certain point, uh, particularly August, September. Yes. We had great enthusiasm with the vaccination drive. But it has tapered down. Uh, and, and what we picked up is that uh, in the course of that, uh, many stories uh, were, getting, were, were being told. Misinformation. And, and, and that information that if you vaccinate, uh, you know, somebody passes on, especially the, el the elderly people. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. the stories go around that is because they're vaccinated. And, yep. the, and, and if the good thing is that uh, our, 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 we, we have a very close monitoring of the vaccination program. Sure. Uh, our institutions, uh, both uh, the regulatory authority and our research institutions, the yep. NICD and SAPRA, have been closely monitoring, including investigating every single death. Sure. And they have said there are people, yes, who have passed on in, uh, after vaccinating, but it has no relationship with the vaccine. Because if you have a, an other underlying conditions, yeah. 
uh, certain things can happen in the process and we find that it's not related to the vaccine. Yeah. So what I want to reassure the people out there is that uh, it is safer to vaccinate. Uh, it is better. You get greater level of protection. Uh, the, you, the risk of getting severe disease yeah. uh, or including the risk of, 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 of death is drastically reduced so sure. that evidence is there yeah. many of us who I'm one of those people who went through what is actually called long COVID right uh, so not just the 14 days and after 14 days you're okay between yeah. July 2020 when I got co uh, co when I got my inf infection yeah and July this year yeah. I went through what's called long COVID so sure. But it's only after I vaccinated that I got much better. I was up and running in the election campaign yep. like, like I've always done before. <laughs> yeah. But before I vaccinated, uh, I had a lot of uh, lingering symptoms of yeah. COVID, uh, which uh, were making it very, very difficult to really, really be uh, fully back uh, sure. on track. I, I know that the scientists say that you have a, a significant number of people who go through that Those type symptoms, of a thing. Yeah long COVID yeah. um, or what they call others call the long haul uh, but but you know I'm, I'm, I, I would like to say that I think vaccination helps yeah. a lot yeah. even if it's just uh, an anecdote yeah. a story told by one person 100 I'm feeling much much better now yeah that message needs to go out and wide because I have seen looking at the stories around and I think I also saw uh, your reference to the fact that uh, we appear to be having a bit of a problem or slower progress in vaccinating people in the townships. Uh, one of our colleagues here always used to joke, I, when, I, when we cross uh, the M1, I, COVID stops. Um, <laughs> yes. What are the issues within the townships, townships in terms of accepting vaccination and ramping up that program? Well, uh, I think where, where, where we have been, because we have really been to many, many places on the vaccination drive, we have gotten out members of our executive council, we have gotten out to the mayors, we've gotten out with uh, the healthcare <coughs> professionals, we've mobilized the community healthcare workers and our community development workers to really go out there. Uh, what the message we're getting is that yes, there was, a, the, there was that great enthusiasm in the early phase of the vaccination program and yeah. later hesitancy set in. And, and what, was, what were the driving factors of that hesitancy? Firstly, a lot of uh, as, as we say, uh, fake news, yeah. a lot of fake news mm. uh, that get out there, but also a lot of uh, other just stories that people tell uh, 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 about the vaccines which have no, have no basis at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we interact more with people, we yeah. persuade more people to go out uh, and vaccinate, we find that we, we were able to break that hesitancy. Sure. Uh, and I, I would like to continue to say that, yes, in Gauteng province, we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, the vaccination program is uh, on, f uh, on, on full scale uh, again. Obviously, when we went through the election, local government elections, yeah. the focus of everybody was on, on the, the elections. elections yeah. But we, we also had, even on election day, yeah. We had vaccination sites open. We were in car everywhere we went, uh, the president and I yeah. were on the campaign trail. In fact, everywhere we went, the first thing I do there is who are the, those, all those who have vaccinated, please yeah. raise, raise, raise up your hands. Yes. And just using that as a sample, you yeah. would find that a lot of people, especially the elderly people, yes. uh, in many, many of the meetings we went to, they said we have taken our vaccine, mm. especially the first jab. Yeah. But getting to the second jab, we have a backlog there. Okay. Uh, it's still close okay. to a million people sure. who have not gone. So the, as, we, as we roll out the vaccine, uh, so you have new people who mm. come, come in who are convinced, <coughs> but they take much longer to go back for their mm. second mm. jab, mm. especially the Pfizer. Absolutely. Uh, so the provinces that were given uh, J and J, uh, appearing to have done better more progress they have done because it's just you know One to jab. get someone back yeah it's yeah. always like that with the uh, with vaccination programs uh, uh, all our vaccination programs uh, the critical thing is including all our treatments yeah so follow through follow up very treatment. important whether even TB patients one yeah. of the difficulties is that when they are at home 
uh, for them to follow through any medication mm. uh, or, or medi uh, medical treatment that requires a follow through yeah. is a big challenge. Yeah. So that, that's why I say the, prov the rural provinces yeah. have largely been given a single dose. From right. that point of view, you get one person, that okay. person is counted. Yeah. You As are done. vaccinated. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With, with us, we, had, we were given much more Pfizer. Yeah. So you get one one vaccine person vaccinated you yeah. you count them now when <laughs> they come back you're not counting them because they're just coming back yeah, for the second dose 100 percent. so in that sense i think we haven't done too badly mm -hmm. uh, when you look at 3.2 million uh, fully vaccinated people in numerical terms is the largest number of fully vaccinated people in the, in the country, country. Uh, the second province is, ju is just like a, a two and a half million right. uh, fully vaccinated people. Yeah. Uh, even our single doses uh, and even the number of vaccines administered, sure. uh, is 26% 20, of all <coughs> our vaccines administered were done <coughs> here in Gauteng. Yeah. But um, we still have a long way to go. That we have we a have long way to go. And you touched on uh, the economy uh, earlier, and I'm sure you are keeping a very busy yes. eye on yes. the impact of uh, the pandemic and the restrictions on the economy of Gauteng, which of course is vital in terms of getting South Africa back uh, onto growth again. Yes. Uh, from the budget, did you see anything that made you very, very hopeful that you'll be able to get onto the ground and begin to implement the reforms that are required to ensure that uh, the economy picks up and the speed that we are seeing this year is maintained going into 2022? Well, uh, I think all of us would really love uh, our country to grow at least at 5%. For sure. Uh, Minister Godongo and his uh, budget speech yesterday uh, uh, revised uh, the, the, the growth, uh, the GDP growth estimates upward, which is a very good story, <laughs> upward to 5.1%. A 5.1% growth in our circumstances mm. would be very, very good because... Welcome. Uh, we, we definitely, we're doing all these other things. We're doing vaccination. Yeah. Uh, we, we're doing putting measures in place to contain the pandemic because we want to save lives. Yeah. At the same time, we want to reopen the economy so yeah. that we, we the, the livelihoods that were destroyed by COVID, businesses yeah. that were closed down, pe yeah. people who lost jobs in Gauteng alone, we, we lost over uh, 600,000 jobs sure. uh, in, the, in, the whole, in this whole period of the pandemic. So for me, uh, it's important to always get the message out there. Vaccination is critical. It mm -hmm. enables us to reopen various sectors of the economy. Yeah. It enables us to rebuild better because we want to build back better. We yeah. want to build an economy that employs more people. Uh, bis uh, businesses are thriving, especially small businesses, yeah. uh, many of, uh, of, of which collapsed. Many mm -hmm. of the small businesses uh, collapsed, especially the, uh, the, the micro enterprises uh, collapsed during uh, uh, COVID. So I, I think the budget speech by the Minister mm -hmm. uh, of Finance uh, yesterday uh, was critical. Uh, the, criti the critical framework there yeah. is about uh, uh, ensuring that um, uh, you know, we, we, can, uh, we, we, we can put our greatest efforts on recovery, yes. economic recovery. And, and that's what, uh, for me, is crucial. You will of course, be analyzing. we need to do all yes, other things. that's what I was going to say. You need to analyze the budget. So we are meeting next week. Uh -huh. uh, what are your priorities our budget, there? Our budget council uh, is meeting next week. The Premier's Budget Committee will meet. And then uh, uh, on the 24th and 25th, we have a provincial executive council, Le Khutla. Uh, to review uh, all the measures. So what, what is our, uh, pri the priority for us? If you think of the, the budget that was presented, the medium-term budget policy st uh, statement presented yeah. by the minister yesterday, we've got to get put lots of money into infrastructure. Right. Uh, because infrastructure is critical. Uh, we've got to attract uh, key uh, private sector players mm -hmm. uh, to partner with us uh, to deal with infrastructure. In that infrastructure includes energy because the uh, current energy problem is choking our efforts, our whole efforts at economic recovery. Yeah. Uh, it's undermined by the, 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 the energy situation that uh, we face now. In, in other words, uh, ESCOM uh, 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 problems. Mm. So infrastructure, in Putting a whole lot of effort in, in investing in infrastructure yeah. is, is important for us. But that is energy. Uh, here in our province, we also have an emerging concern on water. 
Yes. Uh, so getting resources and getting the capabilities, state capabilities, to address those uh, infrastructure problems would be important. Mm. Uh, and enhance our, our, the efficacy of our interventions. Uh, right. And, and, and that's, 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 that's going to be the next thing for me. I am looking very closely in how we make sure that the new local governments yeah. are, are going to really hit the ground running. Right. Uh, we, need, we need local governments that are going to be able to function. We need functional local governments. Yeah. Because our economic uh, trajectory and path in Gauteng is clear. We know what we want to do in, yep. in the city of Tuan in the north. We yep. know what, to, what we want to do here in the center in Johannesburg. Yep. We know what we want to do in the Val, in the south, in the east, in Ekuruleni, in the west. Yep. Uh, we know we, and we have uh, built great partnerships. We've sure. got social compacts that are emerging. We have a, an economic war room yep. uh, currently chaired by our MEC for economic development, okay. MEC Park Stau, okay. where we are sitting with businesses sector by sector. So unlocking, unlocking the potential of every sector, dealing with problems, resolving infrastructure issues, uh, dealing, addressing various issues, skills-related issues. Uh, and so I, I think we are hard at work. I actually would love to sit in and be a fly on the wall on the economic war room. But I think the next best thing I can do is to hunt uh, for the MEC and have a full conversation about the priorities on that front. That but will you'll be just great. Touch some of them. We're going to invite him. Um, you have referred to the need now to get work done on the ground. And of course, you've got a big challenge there on that front because the local government elections have uh, presented you with some headaches in some places where you were able to control uh, in the past, you have lost control as uh, the African National Congress. So I wanted to know your approach in terms of uh, helping uh, the parties find those coalitions, coalitions that will enable your municipalities to be constituted quickly and get to work on the ground very quickly. Okay, let, let Are me you open to everybody and anybody? Let, let me talk in two capacities. The first capacity is that as the Premier of Houting, my 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 primary focus is that we need to ensure that there are stable, functional local governments. Sure. Uh, we, across the province, we <coughs> need municipalities that are stable and functional. Uh, for us to carry out our, pro, uh, our program to implement our economic development and recovery plan uh, across the province, we're going to need the support of local government. We're going to need them to come to party on many issues. They are the ones responsible uh, for spatial planning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for up development approvals, uh, but they're also responsible for some of the bulk infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If we, for example, we're working, uh, if I just use the Lanseria Smart City Development Project, yes. which has now gone through all the phases of approvals we have, we have all the municipalities which we have signed off. We're working with the presidency now. We now go into the investors. Uh, we have the, the DBSA, the Development Bank, Bank of, of Southern, Southern Africa, Africa, which is going to, which is supporting us technically as well as the bulk infrastructure requirements of it. Yep. But we need the municipalities that would understand that that project is critical in Gauteng. We're sure. doing the same in the Val. Right. We just had, uh, <laughs> l l three weeks ago, we had an investment conference in the Val, yeah, where, where, you know, it's in the midst of COVID, uh, in the period where we've gone through difficulties, but we had investors uh, and, and businesses that yeah. have put on the table commitments up to 40 billion rands, sure. just in one investment conference focusing on just one part region. of Houting, yeah. uh, that southern part of Houting. So for us to carry out that plan, we're going to need the municipalities in that district, in Sidibeng, yes. in the Val, yes. uh, to be alert, to be, to be able to function. To, so we don't want to be delayed yeah. by a municipality that cannot meet yeah. to do an approval, because to make hard. a decision, because that coalition doesn't work. So in my official capacity as the Premier, yes. uh, my... I would like those those uh, coalition. The local government election outcome says uh, the parties must work together. That's right. what the powerful statement from from citizens, from voters is. Mm. Uh, guys, we, we we can't we 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 don't trust you all of you enough to give any one of you a single mandate. Yeah. Uh, but we you know uh, work together to make this place function. That's what I would like us to do. Right. The provincial government is 
over the coming week, we, through our Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, we will be supporting the municipalities to, to, to have, hold their first meetings. Yeah. So in my party, in my party, yeah. ANC... I have matched the politics and yes. the, as the a, a local as the, government. As the chairperson <laughs> of the ANC in yeah. Southern province, the ANC also has an approach. We, we as the ANC would like to work with all, with, with all the parties that have some common commitment around development, around service delivery, around stable and functional government. Uh, of course, we, like every party, we've got our own minimum, yeah. uh, basic minimum conditions. Uh, uh, but you know, when, when you are in this situation, I think the most important message, even from the ANC's perspective, is yeah. that we, we, we would like parties to understand that we... So the a, obviously, the ANC is a majority party in all yeah. but one municipalities. Yes. Out of the 11 municipalities in Gauteng, we are a majority party yeah. in 10. But that majority is not enough to enable us to set up government on our own. That's mm. why they are you have to talk coalition to the governments. And uh, we are led by our national uh, uh, ANC national leadership. Okay. And uh, there's a team that okay. is uh, talking to all the different parties on yeah. coalitions. But let yeah. me tell you, I think even from the point of view of the ANC, if we can't get a, 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 an agreement with all the parties, we will go into opposition because sure. we're not desperately looking to be in government. Yeah, yeah. For the, we'll go into opposition yeah. and then go back and rebuild. But what are you hearing in terms of the temperatures inside those negotiation rooms where parties are talking to each other? Well, uh, look, uh, in, behind the scenes, parties are very rational. But in front of cameras, there's <laughs> lots of noise and lots of conditions that are being put forward. <laughs> uh, all I can say to you is that uh, I think uh, uh, the things parties often say publicly that we will not, we don't want to work with that one, we don't yes. want to work with that yes. one, is very different when uh, when they meet and engage. But I think we shouldn't we shouldn't make it difficult for parties to work together in the interest of uh, local communities. Yeah. You know, we can't bring national demands on things that have nothing to do with local communities. Yeah. And try to, and if a coalition cannot function, the li the last thing you know in 2016, yeah. uh, I, I, as you know, I we had local government elections. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the difficulties between 2016 and 2021 now is that we had many changes in a lot of municipalities. So yes. you sit down with this with a group of leaders or a mayor. Yeah. Uh, it's only really in in the West Rand uh, uh, and, and in Ekuruleni where. There was uh, an in Sidibeng where we worked with, but Johannesburg and Swane, as you know, there yeah. were several changes yeah. midstream. Yeah. Yeah. The difficulty with that is that you sit down with a, 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 the mayor, you sit down with the team, leadership yeah. of a municipality, yeah. and you agree. It takes time to get them to understand what gotcha. is the plan of the provincial government for this area. Yeah. What is their role and what is our role? Yeah, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are responsible for education, we are responsible for health care. Yes. We are key driver of the economy. Yeah. And the municipalities are responsible for basic services, but they also have an important role in economic development. Right. Thank you for answering that question, because actually someone was saying what many of the municipalities don't understand is that they actually need the provincial governments to work with them. Without them, they cannot fully implement maybe whatever programs they may come up with. But we're running out of time. So I wanted to talk a little bit into the future. Um, 2021's elections obviously delivered the yes. message that you have just given us, that yes. the voters are saying we don't trust uh, any one of you. We're saying work together. Yes. But 2024 is not too far away. Yes. And yesterday, the Minister of Finance made the point in his budget to talk about the kind of uh, uh, focus that the national government is going to have in the run-up to that. Of course, you would be meshing uh, his politics to an extent as well as uh, the national priorities of the country. And I wanted to know from your perspective, you often talk about the renewal of the ANC. What are the targets as you head into that period and where will you be spending that money? Because the minister is saying, hey guys, some of that money must go into the restributive aspect yes. of uh, the government. Well, let me say just from the party point of view, the ANC is in the midst of a program we call Renewal. Is and it working? It, Many people are asking questions and, and saying, and hey, it's taking too long. Let, let, me, let me say to you that we have put, from, since 2017, uh, a national conference of the ANC, 
2018 and 2019, <coughs> there's been a lot of uh, new initiatives and new fresh approaches uh, that uh, uh, one, focus on rebuilding state institutions. Yes. You know our state institutions have gone through a significant period of instability, mm -hmm. and President Ramaphosa has uh, really focused on ensuring that we build, we bring back uh, the, uh, the institutions, we focus them on, on their, their principal uh, uh, tasks. Uh, we appoint, I mean, the president has been driving a, an agenda of ensuring that we appoint uh, leaders of the various state institutions who are credible, but who will also respect the constitution mm -hmm. uh, and rule of law. And that focus on rebuilding state institutions uh, uh, has been important part of the work that comes from the ANC conference around renewal and rebuilding. Okay. Uh, the other part is rebuilding the party and renewal of the party. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, uh, <coughs> I was saying that uh, one of the key messages we are reading from the electorate uh, out of this local government elections is that, and the feedback we've got directly from people, is that yes, we agree that the renewal is fundamentally uh, important uh, to, for us to trust the ANC. Uh, what you say you want to do to renew the ANC, to deal with issues of corruption, to make yeah. sure that the ANC appoints in its leadership organs and where in government people who are really, really capable, who understand what needs to be done, yeah. who have both the ethics yeah. and the competency. Yeah. Uh, it would, uh, I mean, it will take for us to get our country on the right development course. That's part of the renewal program of the okay. ANC. Okay. Uh, but th the truth is, we have not done enough. Right. And that, and that's the message we are getting from this local government. People like some of the key things, President. Every survey shows, uh, President Ramaphosa that's is very popular, popular amongst the people. I saw they that. like. But they, the concern is the pace at which we need to move. Yeah. And in some instances, we take longer. So, so what is the key message? We need a greater sense of agency to move with greater speed to fix state institutions, to fix the party. Right. Uh, and we need to be bold uh, to tackle all these problems and not be hesitant at all. Sure. Uh, and so three years uh, ahead of 2024, you are going to see uh, that re renewal is going to gain more momentum. Yep. Uh, and, and I think the ANC, uh, through its measures such as the step aside guidelines, through what we are, the ANC is doing now, look at what we are doing with the process of app appointing mayors. It's a completely oh, new yeah. process. Oh, yeah. You've got to be interviewed uh, to be a mayor. And this, for the first time in, the, in, the, in, the, in our system of government, the ANC says, oh, for you to be appointed a mayor, yeah. you need to be in, you need to pass certain minimum requirements. Firstly, you need to bring on the table a set of skills and experience to show you can provide you leadership. You understand what needs to be done in your municipality. You also have a sense of where do we take this place? What is your, your vision uh, for that area? It may be a, lo a small local municipality like here in Gauteng. We have small local municipalities like yeah. Lesedi in yeah. Heidelberg. Yeah. Uh, you, but you need to have a vision. For you to be a point, you need to convince yeah. a panel yeah. that you will do the. Firstly, you know what the problems are. Secondly, you have some solutions. Yeah. You've got the capabilities. Yeah. But you also have the ethics because ethics is an important issue in our system of government. That's why people, these mayors will be vetted. Right. They are going to be vetted. They are going to, there's going to be lifestyle audits conducted on them. Yeah. You're coming there to do the job only and nothing else. Yeah. And you are bringing on the table what is, it takes because otherwise these municipalities will continue to give us headache, problems. Absolutely. They will become dysfunctional. So, so that their renewal agenda of yeah. the ANC yeah. is finding expression in government. And it's absolutely urgent because as someone was explaining to me, if you look at the history of former liberation movements, they go through all these phases yes, and the yes. ANC is in uh, danger even after its 100 years of existence yes. of uh, following the path that has been trodden uh, by other liberation movements. Premier David Makura, thank you for coming through today. Thank you very much and uh, we really look forward to uh, uh, economic recovery and I am glad that uh, what uh, is happening here is a mark an indication uh, that uh, we are getting somewhere uh, with the recovery of our economy we can't 
not uh, put effort into recovery and rebuilding and reconstruction because that's that's the only thing we have 